Uh, I'm tying it with that question that Jesus asked in the middle of the storm. And you know the story. Jesus had told his disciples, go on to the other side. And they obeyed Jesus and they went to the other side. And while they are in the boat, there is a storm. And they are almost ready to, be, to, to perish when they decided as a last resort, somebody says, hey, Jesus is in here. And they rush to Jesus and they wake him up with the question, do you care that we perish? And of course, you know the story, Jesus stilled the storm, but he had a few choice words for them when he was finished stilling the storm. And he looked and he, he said, why are you so afraid? What's the problem? And the second question was, have you no faith? I want to deal with that question. And to deal with the, with the assertion, uh, who's, a, who's afraid of the boogeyman? Uh, you know, there, there is... <laughs> we, we, uh, 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 the, the, this, this boogeyman. But I, I, want to, I want to say this, that I am confident that the boogeyman, Malachi and Matthew, the boogeyman is not somewhere on the outside of us, but I want to believe that the boogeyman is really on the inside of us. That's, that's my proposition today. That it is on the inside, that fear, and that's what I want to be talking about, that fear is really uh, is something on the inside of us that drives us to believe that there is a boogeyman on the outside. Fear. The story is told of the guy, Talbot, who got in his horse and, well, donkey and buggy going on his way to Port of Spain. And on his way, he picked up a woman. And when he picked up the woman, in conversation, he asked her, he says, where are you going? And she says, oh, I'm on my way to Port of Spain and I'm going... I'm taking the Asian flu to Port of Spain. And he says, you've taken the Asian flu to Port of Spain? And she says, yeah, I'm taking the Asian flu to Port of Spain. He says, that's a dreadful thing that you're going to do. And she says, look, let me just promise you, I'm only going to kill five people in Port of Spain. And he says, no, you can't go to Port of Spain and you're going to take the Asian flu and all you're going to kill is five people? And she says, yes, five people. And she pulled out a dagger. And she gave him a dagger and she says, let me just tell you, I want you to hold on to this dagger. I'm only going to kill five people, but let me tell you something. If, if, you, if you find out that I have killed more than five people, I want you to take this dagger, and the next time you see me, I want you to, this is what will kill me, and the Asian flu. And about a week after, he found out that more than 120 people died. And armed with a dagger, he went out looking for this woman that he had picked up, and he found her. And when he found her, he says, you told me that you were only going to kill five people. And she says, yeah, I did. I killed five people. But fear killed 115 people. Boy, this fear that we all have. Some of us, we fear the past. Oh, it reminds me of uh, the taxi driver. The taxi driver, no, I don't have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the taxi driver who was driving along and, and the passenger in the back the passenger is sitting in the back and the passenger touched him on his shoulder 
And when the passenger touched him, he just went off and he just, the car just got out of control and, you know, hit everything that he could find and finally ended up in a little ravine somewhere. And the guy in the back is so embarrassed and he's telling the driver, he says, I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to, I, I got, he got real scared. And then the driver looked at him and the driver says, no, it has nothing to do with you. It's me. Today is really my first day driving a cab. I've driven a hearse for 25 years. <laughs> There are, there are fears that we all have, and, and it seems as though our lives are destroyed by fear because we, all of us fear something. And I was checking on some of the fears that people have. Ophthalmophobia is the fear of being stared at. We don't like to be stared at, that's ophthalmophobia. Acharabitophobia is the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. <laughs> Some people have that fear. They, they just, and they are paralyzed all through life. Paraskave decatrophobia is the fear of Friday the 13th. Some people just wouldn't go outside Friday the 13th. I, I know. For many years, I had that fear. Some of you ladies have this fear. Pogonophobia is the fear of beards. <laughs> beards, just some people, they, they just don't, they, they're scared of beards. Alectorophobia is a fear that vegetarians have. That's the fear of chickens. <laughs> Dendrophobia is the fear of trees. People scared of trees. Didascalinophobia is the fear of going is the fear of going to school. <laughs> and this is a this is a fear that, that I've always had as a kid. Hippopoto monstrosis quididal. Daliophobia is the fear of long words. <laughs> Life is filled with fears, and it seems as though we are, we, these fears that we have, some of them are founded, some of them are unfounded, but there are pr three basic fears that I find people have. First of all, I, th I, think, I think a lot of people are afraid of the past. Something in our past that we did that nobody knows about and we are just that past. We, 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 we fear the past. We fear that some skeleton in the closet might come out one day. And we live life being afraid of the past. Sometimes we live life afraid of somebody in the past. Remember I told you about Mabel? The girl who I wanted to put that tattoo on. Well, I'm scared of her. <laughs> there is somebody in the past that reminds us of an ugly part of our life. And we live life hoping that we never see that person. The past. And sometimes we are haunted by the past. And that fear of the past prevents us from moving forward because the past haunts us. Good news. Jesus is able to deliver us from the past. Amen. We, don't, we don't have to live saddled with that fear of something in the past that we have done or, and, and more so something in the past that somebody has done to us. And we can't leave it alone. And it destroys us because we go through life carrying that hatred and carrying that bitterness because 
of the past, the, that fear of the past. Some people are also saddled with the fear of the present. Because of who you are right now, you are scared to move on into tomorrow. Today has not been fear to you, Marie. Uh, this job that I have today prevents me from moving on to tomorrow because today makes me think that I am no good. And a lot of people, because of the circumstances of today, they, they cannot find themselves moving to tomorrow because something about the present tells them that they are inadequate for the challenges of tomorrow. The present. The present sometimes just paralyzes us. The people in our lives presently prevent us from moving to tomorrow. Because somehow we believe that we cannot shake ourselves of the people, the places, the things of today. So we are scared to move on unto tomorrow. We live with that fear. As your friend LaRue would say, our get up and go has gotten up and gone. And so that because when we are afraid of the present, we become paralyzed. And we are scared to move on. We don't want to face tomorrow. We don't even want to go to sleep because we don't want tomorrow to get here. That's a fear that we have. And then there are those who are so afraid of tomorrow. People get older in life and they are saddled with that fear. I wonder who is going to take care of me when I get old. Are my children are going to be around? Are they going to put me away in a little home somewhere where people will just visit me and people wouldn't know my name? We are scared of tomorrow. Is my social security going to be there by the time I get older? And we can't live today because of tomorrow, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. The economy, the bills we have today, that's the boogeyman inside of us telling us about the future and the future tomorrow is tomorrow is so scary that we can't even move on to tomorrow and so we get paralyzed right here and we are here and we cannot move from this place the little boy when his father told him Go out and hoe the yard, go out and weed the yard, go out and clean the yard. And then in his little plot, and there he is, he's, he's weeding and he's, he's just taking care of his little piece of lot. And then the two businessmen came by and the businessmen said, little boy, little boy, little boy, which is the way to town? And the little boy says, that way. And the little boy is going ahead. Weed in his little plot. He said, oh, no, uh, excuse me, sir. I think, no, the tongue is that way. And the two businessmen began to go that way. And then the little boy says, no, I don't think it's that way. And one businessman said to the other, why don't you leave that little boy? Don't you see he's lost? And the little boy says, I'm not lost. <laughs> you lost. You don't know where tongue is. I is where I'm supposed to be. My father told me, I know where I am. You the one that don't know where. But some of us are like that. We are lost because we don't know whether we are in today, yesterday, or tomorrow. We, don't, we are paralyzed. That fear has gotten a hold of us, and we don't want to move. We stay right there because of the paralysis of fear that has gripped us and we just can't. So I just want to briefly tell you about four things that I think can happen because of this storm that we find ourselves in. And it's, all, it's always a storm. It's the storms that bring up the fear within us. But let me tell you four things about the storm. First of all, Rhonda, I might as well tell you now 
that being a Christian does not exempt you from the storm. That's, it's very simple. I just, I just need to tell you that. Being a child of God does not exempt you from the storm. Storms will come. And you can move over to wherever. You can move wherever you want in America. You can go hide. You can run, but you can't hide. Wherever you go, you're going to get a storm. And I thought, I, thought, I thought for a moment about the disciples. They are in a boat. And here they are. And this God, who we say is in charge of all the storms of life, if God really wanted to work a miracle, this is the way, and, and I, I need to give God some advice sometimes. <laughs> and if, if, if I had to work a miracle, this is the miracle I would work. This boat will feel a storm. This boat will feel a storm. This boat will feel a storm. And this boat will feel a storm. But you see this boat that the disciples are in? Now if you really want to work a miracle, let the people in this boat don't even know that there's a storm going on. Now that's a miracle for you. And while all of them are going topsy-turvy and all of them are, are, are going through the turmoils of the storm, right in the middle of this, there is, there is the disciples' boat. But it ain't that way. I'm sorry to tell you. It ain't that way. All of us will get storms. We are not immune. The Christian life does not let us, you know, this whole, you know, I, I, some years ago I heard about this whole thing about don't claim it. I was in Baltimore when I, I felt so badly. Uh, one sister in church, she was 60 years old, and she had cancer. The doctor just told her, the cancer has come back. And I was in her room, Rhonda, and, on, and all her children came around. And, and, and they are, Ma, don't claim it. Don't, don't claim it. And the doctor just told her what she's supposed to do. And all her children come from all over the place. Ma, don't claim it. Don't claim it. She died. And at the funeral, I told them, oh, you killed her. All of you killed her. Oh, don't claim it, ma. You ain't got it. The doctor said you got it. Now listen to the doctor and get what the doctor told you to get. And while the doctor's medicine is working, pray to God that God will guide and use those. Because all of us will go through the storm. That's the way God made it. Amen. God didn't send the storm, but you will Get Amen. things happen. There's another word that they they use. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> doubt will paralyze your ability to survive in the midst of the storm. You know, because I believe, I'm a believer in miracles. I'm the one believer in miracles, but I believe we live in an imperfect society and an imperfect world. Sickness will come to us. We're going to, a Sparrow, Sparrow talked, you know, Red Fox died, talked about it a long time ago, but some people say, you know, Red Fox died, what he died from nothing? We're going to die from something. We just hope we don't die too young. We want to live as long as we can live. But we are human beings. Adam and Eve did something some years ago that has affected all of us. And these things will happen. We will get old. Well, older. <laughs> and we, things, uh, Chernobyl wrote that book and, uh, in Africa. Things fall apart. We get older. And that's all right. But we thank God that we can still deal with the disparities of life as we get older and as we live in an imperfect world. And the disciples had to learn that they are in, you know, and the fact is Jesus told them get in the boat. That's the, that's the part I know, I know Peter getting mad. Didn't he say get in here? <laughs> Didn't he say get in here? <laughs> oh yeah. And, and, and Peter says, are you sure? 
that now, now, if he said get in here, he must have known about the storm. He, he knows everything. Did he know that there was a storm coming? Is this the setup from the get up? What is this? What, what is this? But it is when we, when we are in the midst of the storm, our doubts will paralyze us from surviving in the midst of the storm. But storms will come. We, they doubted Jesus' concern for them because this is what they said. Carest thou not? <laughs> Boy, that, those are fighting words that you use for Jesus. Do you care? Does Jesus really care? When we get in the midst of the storm, is that the question that we ask? Do you care? That's when doubt enters. But it's, it's all right to doubt. Um, I don't know. Let me see how the hands of how many of you ever doubt God. Put your hand up, Venus. <laughs> <laughs> Some people want to do like this. Yeah. <laughs> we all doubt God. It's all right. God can handle it. You know, God, God is a big girl, a big boy. God can handle it. We doubt, and this is the disciples, they've been, they've been walking with. Do you care that we, do you care, do you really, it's all right to ask that question. Do you care? And God is big enough that God is going to respond to that question. Don't be embarrassed to, because we are going to get ourselves to, in that place where we say, look, does God really care? How come Venus don't have the same problems I have? Do you really care? Do, does she serve a different God? Is, does, does she call on you a certain time of the day? And that's why she's getting through? Why, why is she getting, do you really care? And so that doubt about the concern. There's also the doubt about Jesus' commitment to them. <sighs> and that's why they said, we perish, man. We are, we are, we are perishing. Do you, do, you, do you really care? We are about to perish. Because Jesus could have, as soon as the storm came up. Now, um, he's asleep. I don't know what his problem was, but he, he went to sleep. He told them, let's go to the other side. And they get in the boat. And he goes and he finds a little mattress somewhere and a little pillow, and he goes to sleep. And the storm comes up, and don't tell me he didn't know a storm was brewing. And he's fast asleep, snoring, chasing all the cockroaches and the rats. And Jesus is sleeping. And the disciples are there throwing buckets of water out, buckets of water out, buckets of water out. And there is Jesus still just, <laughs> Jesus is chilling out. He's sleeping. Probably dreaming about Angel Gabriel <laughs> and all of that. And then they go wake him up. And they said, do you care? Do you care? What you talking about, man? Do you care? For what? We are perishing. In other words, they, they are saying, we have had it. While you were sleeping, dreaming, we have been throwing buckets of water over. We are doing it over and over again. And we have gotten to the place now. Right now, we are about to drown. We are about to go under. Do you care? Have you been there? <laughs> <laughs> they doubted his commitment to them but they also doubted his comments to them because this is what Jesus had said to them they forgot Jesus said let us pass over to the other side Jesus didn't tell them anything about what was happening until they get to the other side Jesus says let us go to the other side 
They doubted Jesus' ability to take them to the other side. When What they were really doing is they forgot. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Now, when, when they were going through all that they were going through, what happened to that part of Jesus' command? The other side. They forgot that's what Jesus says. And how many of you know that when Jesus says, let's go to the other side, He's going to be with you until you get to the other side. Amen. That's what he said. He says, let's go, let's go to the other side. He didn't say, let's go in the storm. He says, let's go to the other side. And in, when the storms came, they forgot the command of God. They forgot what he commanded. He says, let's go to the other side. And if they kept their eyes on, I was in I was the, my, one of my first early drives in Maryland. And I was driving, and, and I was learning signs in America, and they, they have some strange signs in America. And I saw this sign that I've never seen anywhere. I was driving up to go preach somewhere, and Jean was with me, the kids were with me, and we were going up, and I saw a sign that I'd never seen in my life. And this is what the sign said. Falling rocks. Now, what is that? So I'm driving the first time, here I am in America, man, and I'm going through the boondocks, going through all the places up there, and up there going through the hills, I saw the sign, Falling Rocks. I got paralyzed, man. I just stopped the car. <laughs> falling Rocks, what are you supposed to do with Falling Rocks? Drive through the Falling Rocks? I'd never seen that sign in my life. I'd be stupid to drive through Falling Rocks. I pull aside. <laughs> I'm going to wait till the rocks fall. <laughs> so I just pull aside. I, I said, falling rocks. You can't drive through falling rocks. Until I saw other cars going by, and then I realized, oh, you're supposed to. But there is something I learned about falling rocks. I could have spent the rest of the night, Gene, looking for the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Those rocks that are supposed to fall, I could have spent the, And if I continued to drive with three kids in the back and Jean, who don't pay no attention when she's in the front, she's just sitting down. You can kill her. She's just sitting down and you know, in her own world and she's going along. But, and I could have driven looking for the rocks instead of looking at the cars right around me. And I had to learn, no, man, don't look for no rocks. <laughs> Just, you better watch them cars. Because I, I was tempted to look for the rocks because I thought it's a tourist attraction. <laughs> <laughs> falling rocks? Well, I want to see falling rocks. But I found out, no, keep your eyes on the road. And that's what we do in the midst of the storm sometimes. We, keep, we put our eyes on the rocks. And we hit the cars that are coming. It's just a warning. It ain't for real. It's only a boogeyman. Thirdly, the storms can expose us to great discoveries in our life. You can discover some stuff in the storm that you didn't know. <laughs> you, know you go through some things in life and you didn't know that you could do some things because you went. Now, first of all, let me just say, I am one theologian that do not believe that God sent nothing to you. I don't believe God sent no storm. So put that in your pipe. Well, whatever. <laughs> I don't believe that God sent anything. Adversities. I don't believe that. It happens. It happens to you. I know the story of Job and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I, uh, things happen. But I believe that there is a God when things happen in our lives. I believe that there is a God who allows us to discover some latent possibilities that we have within us and power that we didn't know we had all the time. Amen. To deal with it. And we discover some things. Boy, it's a eureka moment that comes and we just never knew. My gosh. You know that, that um, moment that comes in your life, the older you come, you, most of you are not there yet. 
Um, but I'm there, and some of you are getting there. But I remember so well when I used to be in headquarters and going and driving in those places, and I, that senior moment come to you. You ever been driving on the highway and you saw a car or you saw a truck, one of them trucks coming? And you know the truck is coming towards you. And you know when the truck passes you, you're going to feel something. You're going to feel a wind. And you're driving along, and that moment comes when you say, Oh, where did the truck go? <laughs> In Trinidad, we say, Was it a Gwen or was that a Laja Bless or what? What, <laughs> where, what happened? Where, that truck, where did the truck go? The truck passed. You didn't even know the truck passed. And it has happened to me. And every now and then it has happened. That's in a nanosecond, you fall asleep behind the wheel. And you don't even know the truck passed. And I said, thank God I'm a good driver. <laughs> thank God I'm a good driver. <laughs> That's when the God's Holy Spirit comes and God's Holy Spirit said, no, you ain't that good. But you fell asleep, my little son. In that nanosecond, you fell asleep. And when you were running into that truck, I sent my angels from the back seat to come over to the front seat and took that wheel away from you. And it's the angels that were driving that truck. You ain't that good. That's not why you didn't you ain't end up in the cemetery somewhere. God gives us those discoveries in the middle of the storm that you discover, yes, I have angels in my back seat. I still believe in angels. Do you? Oh, you, you, you also believe in angels? Sissy, you believe in angels? Oh, I thought I was the only one. I, 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 I still believe in angels. At my age, I still believe angels all around. I used, to, I used to pray. I used to pray. God sent angels in my house. I used to pray that prayer all the time. Before I go to sleep, Lord, send angels. Send an angel at that door. Send an angel at the other door. Send an angel at the window. I used to pray that, man. Lord, send angels. And then look at my three children and say, Lord, send an angel by him. <laughs> And send an angel by her. And a newly sent an angel there. And then I look at my wife and I say, send five angels over there. <laughs> still believe in angels. Still believe that God can send angels in our lives to do them. Those are the discoveries that we find. Oh, God is so good. And then finally, storms. In the midst of the storms, we can have a correction to the distorted views that we have and that we hold. Because some of us have some distorted views of the problems that we have in our lives. Master, master, we are perishing. No, you're not perishing. God is with you. Don't tell God you're perishing. <laughs> Don't, don't tell God, God don't need that. That's, that's, that's overload. God don't need that. Because we talk about our problems more than we talk about the possibilities of God to be able to deliver us. So someone said, instead of constantly telling God about the problems that we have, why don't you tell your problems about the God that you have? Come on, i got to say that again. Instead of constantly telling God about the problems, tell your problems about the God. Problem, you don't know the God that I serve. Don't play with me. <laughs> I serve a mighty God. What would your problems do if you ever reminded your problems about the God that you have? I got a God. I got a Savior. I got a God who can do all things. That when your problems hear that, what happens? Oh, yeah. The distorted view of our problems, there's also the distorted view of ourselves. We are perishing. Whew. Master, we are perishing. We are perishing. Hey, 
Let me just say this, and I would say it to the guys on the boat. You must be out of your cotton-picking mind to think that we are perishing. Guess who is in this boat? Guess who is in this boat? Guess who is sleeping in this boat? How do you mean we perishing? We ain't perishing? As long as he is in this boat, we ain't perishing. Amen. They're talking about we perishing, and Jesus said, don't talk about yourself, don't talk about me. <laughs> we ain't perishing. Because Jesus is in this boat with us. Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing. We are. Just the presence of God. Don't be like that little boy, though, who his mother told him, his mother told him, little Johnny, go in that closet and bring me a can of beans. And it was already dark, and the little Johnny don't want to go and get the can of beans in the closet because he's so scared. And mother says, no, just Johnny, go ahead. Go ahead, go on. He says, no, it's dark in there. I don't want to go in there. And the mother made the mistake. The mother says, Johnny, Jesus is in there. Go on in there. And he just went right by the door and he says, Jesus, <laughs> since you in there, pass me. <laughs> and then we have a distorted view of Jesus himself. The storms will come in our lives, but we can deal with the storms. It's not, it's not over until it's over. Storms will come. Don't fall into the trap of believing that God, that God sent that storm in your life. God didn't send that storm in your life. It happened. But in the midst of this, don't fall prey to the doubts that all of us have sometimes in God's ability to do what God is known to do. And allow God's Holy Spirit on this day to come into your life and deal with those fears, those phobias that we all have and we have them. It's all right. But if you would remember anything from the message today, we are in this boat together. Jesus did not say, you go over to the other side. He said, let us go over to the other side. And so that whatever storms come, he is in here with me. And as long as... As he's in control, we're not going under. <laughs> not if he is over our lives and whatever we're going through. Amen. Amen. You're either, you're either uh, uh, going into a storm. You're either in the storm right now. Or you get in the way. But that's all right. He will be with you. What are we going to sing, Ian? Yeah? Let's stand, please.